Hmm. You make me a bastard! Where'd you get your shoes? Jesus Christ! One gamba to alley. This is the Dave Duke podcast. Well, 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 my friend. Welcome to episode three of the Dave Duke Podcast. I'm Dave Duke. Thank you for listening. We're three weeks already in, and you might have thought, hey, Dave Duke's on holidays this week. We're not going to get any podcast to him. Well, no. You are, and you're here. Welcome to New York City. Today, I am talking to you from the Empire State Building. And you say, fuck off. No, you're not. Well, I am. How, Dave? How are you broadcasting to us from the Empire State Building? Not just the most prestigious and famous building in New York. Not just the most famous building in America. But one of the most famous buildings in the world. Well, let me tell you something that you probably already know. Life is not about what you know or how talented you are. It is about who you know. And connections. And getting to the right right places. I am talking to you from the LinkedIn offices in Empire State Building, New York City. Because I have a mate that works for LinkedIn. And he is visiting here. And I decided I'd tag along. I was like, hey, I'd love a place to record a podcast from. And he was like, come to the Empire State Building. I'm going to the LinkedIn offices. We can tag along together. And I'm like, fuck yeah. Let me see how the corporate world or the tech world or the social media world lives. And let me tell you something. At some spot, I work in Monksland and Athlone. That's where the iRadio offices are. Even though a lot of people think we're in Galway, a lot of people think we're in Dublin. No, we're in Athlone. And when you look out at the iRadio offices in Athlone, it's a wasteland. It's depressing 365 days of the year. Even when there is sun Looking out of the offices of iRadio at loan. It's not creatively inspiring. Genuinely, sometimes it's like looking out the window and it's Chernobyl. It's just a wasteland. Nobody lives there. The soil won't grow anything for a hundred years. And then you have people working out of the Empire State Building. In New York City, the capital of the world. It's a crazy bit of business. I have some key points for today's podcast. Welcome to the Empire State Building. Done that. How am I here? We've done that. It's not who you know, it's what you know. You probably already knew that, but sometimes it's important to hear it again. What is LinkedIn? Why am I here? What have I done? What's to come? So let's start with what is LinkedIn. Uh, Briefly, it is a social media network, a bit like Facebook, but it's for corporate professionals. Everyone speaks highly of themselves and of other people there's a lot of corporate hand jobs going on oh you are so great that is me giving someone a corporate hand job and then they're giving you a hand shandy back that's basically what LinkedIn is and bear in mind I'm saying this to you now and there are at least 20 LinkedIn employees in my view so this is a very dangerous podcast corporate hand jobs for all great company to work for I'd work for it myself I just think I might be wholly underqualified. Moving swiftly on before someone kicks me out of the LinkedIn offices in Empire State Building, why am I here? Why am I in New York City? Well, child, come and get an education for yourself. There is a thing called football, Gaelic football. You might be familiar with it. You might be familiar that Leitrim has a football team. So in the Connacht Championship, there are not five teams. There are five counties in Connacht, but there are in fact Seven teams. So Leitrim, Mayo, Schleigo, Roscommon, Galway, London and New York. So seven teams compete for the Connacht Football Senior Championship. Every five years, a team will go to London. And every five years, one of the five Connacht teams will go to New York. And this year, it is Leitrim. So Leitrim will play New York in Yonkers, Gaelic Park, on Easter Saturday at 6pm, which is 11pm Irish time. I think it's one for the history books. I don't think a 
senior football championship game has ever been played so late, Irish time, but someone will know better than me and maybe Marty Morrissey will be able to figure that out. So five years ago I didn't go and I've regretted it every minute. So it's not something I woke up every morning and went, oh my fucking God, I can't believe I didn't go. But it was always in the back of my mind. The next time Leitrim is playing New York, we're going. Hell or high water, money, no option, no object, let's go. So we're here and doing the show, by the time you hear this, it might have already gone out, doing the show Friday for um, J.P. Clark's New York. J.P. Clark's is a pub in Yonkers in New York. Yonkers is a massive Irish community. And J.P. Clark's is the official sponsors of Leitrim GAA. And I laugh not out of disrespect to J.P. Clark's, but it is the state of affairs of Leitrim football. And how small we are is that a bar in New York, and fair play to them. It's a massive commitment of money for them to put forward, but the fact that a bar in New York City can sponsor a county team, we seriously need some massive investment in Leitrim. And it's unfair that we are going up against the likes of AIG, who sponsor Dublin, what have you. Supermax, Pat McDonough, multi-millionaire sponsors Galway. That's a conversation for another day, but just giving you a sense of Leitrim football, how big of a trip this is for people to make, and how big of an occasion it is for the Irish community in New York that a Connacht team comes over here every year. It's one big excuse for a piss-up, and I'm going to be in the middle of it. So tomorrow's show, aka Friday's show, Friday the 7th of April, will or either has already come from J.P. Clark's New York by the time you hear this. And we're here on holidays. So we left on Tuesday and we flew to Philadelphia because it was cheaper. The flights are only about 500, 550 return each, which I think is a pretty good deal to fly from Ireland to Philadelphia for 550 return with Aer Lingus. Grand sound. But then we spent $200 on an Uber to get from Philly to New York. So to be honest, don't do what we done. Bit fucking stupid. Oh, we'll pay less for these flights. But sure, then we'll pay mad money on a new bar to get to New York. We're staying in Times Square. And maybe you're interested in how much we paid. It's $900 for three nights in the what I consider to be the capital of the world. You can stay three nights in New York City, city centre, for less than you can in Dublin or at loan, or potentially even Mullingar. I haven't looked at the hotel prices in Mullingar, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I can say with almost certainty that I can stay for cheaper in New York City than Mullingar. But then, that's all right, Dave. Oh, my God. Even the hotels are cheaper in New York City. Somebody write an Irish Daily Mirror article about it. Hold your fucking horses. We went to Madison Square Garden on Wednesday night to see an ice hockey game. Tickets were about $180 a piece. And those weren't off any ticket scalpers. That was off Ticketmaster themselves. And two pint cans of Corona. You mightn't have ever seen a pint can of Corona, but they do exist. Two pint cans of Corona in Madison Square Garden costs 37 fucking dollars. (laughs) Thirty seven dollars. Fucking mental. Can you imagine the shock of making up? Uh, essentially, it's just two pints. So, uh, not to confuse the situation, let's not call this two pint cans because you'd be like, "Oh, maybe they're huge." No, two pints of Corona, thirty seven dollars. Oh, sure. How could you get wasted on that? Thirty seven dollars for two pints. Two pints. <laughs> then we went to another Irish bar. Well, sorry, the Madison Square Garden is not a, another Irish bar. It's not an Irish bar to begin with. But we went from Madison Square Garden, two pint cans of Corona for $37. And we went to an Irish bar off Times Square. Not going to name them because I feel it might be unfair. I feel it's okay. I can call out Madison Square Garden, but I feel uh, bad calling out an Irish pub. Does that make sense? So we went to an Irish pub and those were half pints, or just normal cans of Corona. So 
maybe 300 mil, the same size as a bottle. So let's call it two bottles of Corona was $20. So actually, Madison Square Garden was better value, two pints for $37, than two bottles for $20, in my estimation. Fucking either way, robin bastard of a city, New York, it is. It's crazy money. Like, I don't think I could work here for any less than $150,000. You go, Jesus, Dave, you're really putting a massive value on yourself. But it's phenomenally expensive. When you're paying $37 for two pints of Corona and Madison Square Garden after paying nearly $200 a piece for tickets, you'd want 150 grand a year. So how could you go on holidays or get anything done if you weren't on at least 150 grand a year? Show me the money. But I don't think the money of $150,000 a year is in radio presenting. It's a, it's not a great paid job, lads. You think I am absolutely loaded with money. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, far from it. That is the catering truck going by me there, if you could hear it. Full of free food here in LinkedIn. I'm going to stay here for the day. I'm not going to leave. They're going to have to kick me out and be like, please, sir, you don't work here. You just recorded a podcast here. Could you get the fuck out? And I'd be like... But free food, please. Please feed me. Feed me! I do love America, though. They are mad bastards. They are so funny. I've been blown out of it so many times by cars. I've definitely been blown at more than your average porn star has been blown. They have zero patience for anything. You might even have the right away on the crosswalks or the zebra crossings as we call them they will just go they're they're crazy they are crazy but you know what fair play to them did you ever I say fair play to them as because if you read their national anthem which I did last night so we were at a hockey game in Madison Square Garden and the national anthem was sung And some people didn't stand up for it. And I was like, hey, mate, the two of us are standing and we're not speaking a word and we're going to respectfully observe the national anthem in case we're shot. Okay? I don't want to be shot in America. Everyone's getting shot here. Everyone. You can't even go to school and you're getting shot around here. Isn't that mental? Well, I'm not getting shot at my first ice hockey game in Madison Square Garden. So let's respectfully observe the anthem. But the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner, it was the first time I proper studied them. Have you studied them? It's all about going to war. So let's go through the lyrics of the American National Anthem. We'll keep this quick. Don't worry. But, oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what we proudly, you know, so on and so far. But let's get to this part. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. So essentially what I read from that was that the rocket's red glare, basically we were at war and there was bombs, bombs bursting all over the place, but sure, at least our flag was still flying. They love liberty, they love freedom, and they love bombing fuckers that are pure innocent. So, you can't really blame America for being impatient and blowing their horns that if your national anthem is about let's bomb everyone else as long as we have our freedom. And where is the band who so valiantly swore that the havoc of war and the battle's confusion a home and a country should leave us no more? Their blood has washed out their foul foot- footsteps pollution. No refugee could save the hireling and slave. Like, please do one thing for me today and look up the lyrics of the Star Spangled Banner, the American National Anthem. And it will answer a lot of questions as to what I personally think and what you personally might think of Americans that they are on a different planet. Oh, my God. What a different... Wow. Oh, my God. What a different planet. Anyways, moving on from why I think Americans are mental and funny and I love taking the piss out of them and their accents are hilarious. Moving on from all that. 
I'm never going to break in America. I'm never going to be famous here. So I might as well tell you my real truthful thoughts. Moving on swiftly. Let's go through an itinerary of our flight and what's to come this week. So we flew in on Tuesday to Philadelphia. We took an Uber to New York. We done nothing on Tuesday. We got up Wednesday, bright and early, and we done some sightseeing. We went to Wall Street. We went to the Raging Bull. It's a big bronze bull to symbolize prosperity, and a bull is a term in stocks and shares, or bull run. They're on the up. A lot of people queue every single day to hold a pair of brass balls of this ball in the financial district down in Wall Street. We went to the 9-11 memorial, which I had been to before, but my friend hadn't been. It was pissing rain all day. I bought a poncho for $12 from a merch stand because nothing says let's honour our falling of this massive terrorist attack that we all remember if we were alive for it on 9 11 then selling ponchos and little American flags. It's a bit crazy. I, I, like, I just can't see after the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria there being merch stands with little turkey flags and them selling ponchos. But America, America, you're, uh, I thought this was America. We also yesterday went to Gallagher's Steakhouse, so we're still on Wednesday. And if you are ever in New York and you like paying over the odds for really good steak, Gallagher's Steakhouse is the place for you. We then went from there to Madison Square Garden to watch the ice hockey game. Today is Thursday. Got up here in the LinkedIn offices to the top of the Empire State Building. Friday. Oh, sorry, tonight a.k.a. Thursday, when I'm talking to you, we are going to Lewis Capaldi in Radio City Hall, another iconic building in New York City and across the world. So we'll bring you updates on that next week. Friday, we'll see the game being broadcasted live from J.P. Clark's McLean Avenue. Saturday is the actual Connacht Football Championship game itself. So that'll be fun. And then on Sunday... (laughs) <laughs> we're going to be dying. Monday, we will go back to Pennsylvania. No, not Pennsylvania. Philadelphia. We're going to explore there. And then on Tuesday night, we're flying back to Ireland. And then Wednesday, I will be jet lagged all day. Thursday, back in the show. Friday, back in the show. Friday, then doing Teenage Disco in Mondorna County, Donegal. And then returning to Downings for one of my favourite gigs ever just one of my favourite places ever on Saturday so I'm all go it's all a bit stone fucking mental so we're going to keep this podcast very short today since I'm in New York I thought it was important to bring you up to date I know I've went absolutely stone mental for the last 18 minutes or so but I want to keep consistency with these podcasts I want to make sure that there is a podcast there every week for you I want to thank you for all the beautiful feedback all the five-star reviews people have left. It's been really special. We're only three weeks in, and how much this has grown and the word is spreading is quite phenomenal. I know I said last week that I would talk about abuse, but we'll leave that for today, and we will reconvene when I'm back from New York City. Please don't be afraid to drop me a line at any time. Mr. Dave Duke on Instagram is the best for feedback, for comments, for observations. I know some people got in touch last week saying, holy shit, I stayed in that hotel in London. Oh my God, what shitholes you've stayed in. Some people were sharing their stories of shithole hotels. So all that feedback, all that, hey, I have a story to tell. I love that. So I'm sorry today has been... A little bit all over the place. I hope you got a kick and a laugh out of this. We'll reconvene next week. And for me, Dave Duke, to you, thank you for listening. Hit subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Hit follow on Spotify. Give it a five-star review if you feel so fit. And take it, Savage Handy.